Hello, good crowd. I am thrilled today to have with us Kate Cochran. She is the CEO of Upaya Social Ventures, and they're doing remarkable things in India, especially where they're making investments in uh, local companies that are employing thousands and thousands of people with dignified work. Stick around, you don't want to miss this episode. Welcome to the Your Mark on the World show with your champion of social good, Devin D. Thorpe. Kate, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Well, we're thrilled to have you and grateful for the opportunity to talk a little bit about the work that you're doing. Um, Kate, tell us a little bit about Upaya Social Ventures. Sure. Upaya Social Ventures was founded in 2011 by a group of people who had been working in microfinance. And the question that we were founded to solve is how do you help the population who's too poor and too vulnerable to take out a microcredit loan? And the answer that the founders hit on is really, if you can't take a loan, you need reliable income. You need to know how you're going to pay for your food each day. And the way to do that is through a job. And um, because we are all um, big champions of entrepreneurs, you know, we believe the best way to create jobs is to invest in and support entrepreneurs. Uh, so that was the theory in 2011. And now in 2019, we've invested in 16 companies and they have created over 14,000 jobs. It, it, it really is amazing, but it's, it's an in, implicit recognition that not everyone is or should be an entrepreneur, isn't it? Exactly. Uh, I think that that is, um, you know, being an entrepreneur means being a risk taker. The extreme poor, you know, just by definition, shouldn't be asked to take risks. And, um, you know, in order to build stability in their lives, having a reliable income is the game changer. Yeah. It is interesting. Some of us, when we're working on international development projects, want to turn everyone into a, a, an entrepreneur. And uh, what so many people want is just a, a, a J, an old-fashioned J-O-B, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, and, and on the other side of the spectrum, um, we love entrepreneurs. They're the reason that we can be successful. And we love finding those risk takers who have unique ideas and the tenacity to make it work. Um, and putting these two things together is where the magic happens. Yeah. Now, you are funding things that are a little different than Silicon Valley. Give us some examples of the kinds of companies you've backed. Yes, we absolutely are. I mean, I think Silicon Valley has found um, amazing ways to grow companies by replacing people with technology sometimes. Um, those are not companies we're interested in. We're looking for companies that really take advantage of working with people and can grow their labor force as part of their business model. So one company, for example, that we're working with is called Camel Plates. And you might have seen products like theirs um, in places like Whole Foods. They create uh, dinnerware out of palm leaves. It's biodegradable, it's great for the environment, and they are working in a very poor region in Northeast India where they hire people to collect all of these palm leaves that fall naturally to the ground, and then they have another workforce whom they hire in their factories to use the presses to create the dinnerware. And in this way, they have created nearly 3,000 jobs. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Now, it's an uncomfortable topic uh, because there's no perfect answer, but what are the typical wages for uh, those employees? I, I presume they're not making $15 an hour. If they're, well, if they're making uh, $15 an hour when we start, then we've made a mistake in our investment. <laughs> um, no, so, the, so this population, and just to um, ground us in um, the, the facts of what extreme poverty look like, um, they are people who are living on less than $1.90 a day uh, mm -hmm. before they get these jobs. Um, across our, our portfolio, on average, with one of these jobs, they're 
household income doubles. Um, so we, and we go and we do surveys and we look when they first get their job and then we come back and do a midline survey. They're making maybe $3, maybe $5, um, maybe um, in some companies up to $7. But more than the amount, it's really the reliability of the income that changes their lives. Yeah, yeah. These are difficult things. Give us a sense of uh, some of the other jobs that uh, you've been able to create. Uh, yeah, we've talked about gathering palm leaves and making the utensils. What else? Yeah, so there's another company that we're invested in and we're always really um, clear to say that our entrepreneurs create the jobs, we just help them. Um, but there's a company we invested in in Bangalore called Sahas Zero Waste. And they have created thousands of jobs in the waste management space. And some of their employees are deployed to corporate campuses to separate landfill waste from recyclable waste. And this is a more efficient way for a company like Accenture or Microsoft to comply with environmental regulations in India. Um, mm -hmm. They also are a, a purchaser from, you know, what um, people uh, might think of as rag pickers. We, we use the word waste collectors because it's more dignified. Mm -hmm. um, they give training, they give safety equipment, and they pay a premium for purchasing uh, waste for particular companies like Tetra Pak. Uh, so these are um, reliable, as I said, um, opportunities for extremely poor people who know that every Wednesday they can go to Sahas and they can earn enough to live on. Yeah. Um, in addition to the wage jobs that they are providing for the uh, employees who are working on the corporate campuses. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about your process. You, you have a two or three step process as people come on board, you, you, you do some screening and mentoring and you do some investing and ongoing mentoring. Tell us a little bit about how that works. Sure. So the first five years of Upaya's history, um, we were an opportunistic investor. Um, we were always on the hunt for a good company that could create jobs, um, but it was a bit ad hoc. Um, starting in 2017, we formalized our process and realized that we had a constraint with how much we could invest, but we wanted to work with more companies than we could afford to invest. So we launched an accelerator as a way to provide value to companies while we were getting to know them. And also, we believed, and it, I think has proved out, as we get to know them better through a four to six month accelerator, we can make better informed investment decisions. Uh, so, so we make an open call for applications for our accelerator at the beginning of the year. Um, for our agribusiness accelerator, we had 300 companies apply for eight spots. Uh, we go through several rounds of review and ultimately have a selection committee pick the eight to 12 companies we work with for four to six months. Uh, we bring them together, uh, bring them with mentors and experts. Uh, and then at the end of that process, we select two to three companies from the cohort to invest in. This year, we're fortunate. Um, we have a new pool of capital to invest. So when we get to know companies um, through that process who look like they are probably too mature for our accelerator, but actually fit our investment criteria, um, we can invest in those as well. And then once we've invested and they're part of our portfolio, uh, then our team works with them to get onto a regular financial reporting, um, identify what other needs they have, and try to link them through people in our network to those needs. Well, what are you most proud of having accomplished as you look back on your work? Absolutely, the answer to that is the fact that 80% of the job holders in our uh, portfolio companies have moved out of extreme poverty. Um, we're very clear about why we do this and don't ever uh, get confused by all of the other things happening in the impact investing world. We're about job creation to move families out of poverty. Uh, I, I love that clarity and focus that you've achieved. 
as you think back on your work over the past eight or nine years, what's the most important lesson you take from your experience? You know, I really believe in helping people help themselves. Uh, there's dignity in that, but there's also leverage. Um, I have, you know, first in working in microfinance and now in working at Upaya, seeing that if you can just open a door for opportunities and self-reliance, the people I've met are eager to walk through that door and take it from there. Um, and it's very fulfilling personally, uh, but it, it's also really efficient. That's it's, uh, really an important takeaway. Uh, Kate, how did you get started in this and why was it important to you? Yeah, so how I got started was I got lucky by talking to inspirational people who convinced me that international development wasn't such an overwhelming challenge that I should stay away from it. Um, and Um, sorry about that. Um, and then, and why it's important to me, the more I've, I've traveled and seen people in extreme poverty, it's inhumane. In the 21st century, people should not be living on $1.90 a day or less. Um, it is absolutely an abomination. Um, so, so that's the, the sort of negative driver. The positive driver is I have seen what can happen when market forces are applied to humanitarian needs, and it is inspiring. The entrepreneurs I meet are inspiring their grit, their ideas. Um, that's what gets me out of bed every day. Excellent. Kate, what is your superpower? Uh, so I often joke that my superpower actually is I can sleep on planes, which <laughs> is really, really helpful in this industry. Yes, um, indeed. But, but you know, joking aside, I think that my superpower is that I keep things focused on what we're really trying to accomplish, what the end goal is. Um, this can be hard and complicated work, um, but if you can simplify a process for a team and make sure that we know what the end is that we're trying to accomplish, the decision-making gets a lot easier. I hear you, I hear you. Kate, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Uh, we're, we're thrilled that you would make time, and I recognize you're busy. But before you go, would you take just a moment and tell people how they can learn more about Upaya Social Ventures and how they can connect with you personally? Absolutely. The best way to learn about Upaya Social Ventures is to come to our website, and that's upayasv.org. There's contact information there as well. Um, on social me media, you can find us on Twitter at Upaya SV, and um, you can reach me personally through LinkedIn. Fantastic. Well, uh, Kate, again, we thank you very much for taking the time to be with us and wish you every success in your work to employ more people who are uh, living in extreme poverty. Thank you so much, Devin. All righty. Let's do some good. Devin Thorpe's mission is to end extreme poverty, improve global health, and mitigate climate change before 2045 by finding and sharing the stories of those who are doing the most good. Thanks for tuning in to the Your Mark on the World show, the Social Impact Podcast. Please subscribe via YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or Spotify. 